Welcome to Gold Star Classroom, the podcast where our panelists go back to school. We'll grade them on their answers to a variety of general knowledge and trivia questions. They don't know what we're going to ask, and we don't know what they're going to say. The student with the highest grade at the end of the class will win the coveted classroom prize, the Golden Banana. I'm your host and headmaster, Professor Jerry Jaffe. Welcome to today's episode of Gold Star Classroom. Today's episode is being recorded at Toth's Place, your local watering hole in Mentor, Ohio. I'm your host and professor, Jerry Jaffe. I'd like to introduce today's students. On my left is educator, Ed Werner. Say hello, Ed. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ed. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Jerry. On my right is sportscaster and comedian, Bill Barranque. I just wonder why I didn't get to sit in the back of the class. Well, we like to get a good look at you up here at the front of the class, Bill. That's why it's a podcast. We're happy to have you. (laughs) And sitting directly across from me at the table is artist and actor, Brandon Stroud. Adding to the stock of available reality. Ooh. How much more are you going to suck up, seriously? Okay. (laughs) Minus one point for (laughs) brown (laughs) nosing. One point? (laughs) Just seen what happened before we started. (laughs) Well, now that we have started, we're going to start today's quiz, today's class, with a science question. I pose to you, today's students, this simple sounding question. What do you think? Is it possible to be bored to death? Ed, you look like you want to say something. No sleeping in my class. Is it possible? Is it medically possible to literally die of boredom? No. I'm jumping in here. <laughs> um, no, I'm no. jumping in. Why would you I, say no? I, I don't... All right, personally here, I think that uh, maybe this is my, my own virtue, that being bored is a good time for self-reflection. But when it crosses a certain threshold, I mean, mm-hmm. it has to cross a, a certain threshold. There, there's boredom, which might last for an hour or two or three mm-hmm. After that point, you start getting into things maybe that you wouldn't usually get into. I mean, after your TV, after you're just sitting around, drinking coffee, eating food, you know what I mean? You might accidentally get into a point of transcendence past that point. So if you can remain asleep during that time, I believe no. I think the further so you're, you go... you're comparing boredom to a kind of meditative state. I think the further you go, yeah. It's not the more Bill, bored you Bill, first get. of all, you are a rookie on the whole boredom thing. You are totally <laughs> missing the point. If you are bored, yes. And as a matter of fact, not to be stupid, though that is what we're going to discover throughout this half hour, <laughs> is, is boredom, yes. I believe boredom because you know why? It leads to problems... My point goes to retired people. Retired people who don't have hobbies and they don't have anything to do, all of a sudden you find their health will decline very rapidly. It's all because of the boredom. That or I see crowds in my shows. Interesting, uh, Brandon is the youngest student in today's class. so He probably does not understand what the word boredom means. Ed, you wanted to say something? Uh, Yes, I would like to jump in for a moment. Um, from my undergraduate studies, I read a little bit about Noam Chomsky at MIT and okay. neurolinguistic programming. And I also remember that he did studies with chimpanzees. And if the mother chimpanzee would abandon the baby chimpanzee, the baby would suffer from something called failure to thrive, just from not having anything exciting okay. in its environment. And it could actually die from not having that maternal taken care of. So, so you're saying the chimpanzee is bored from not throwing its poo? Yes. I didn't okay. think that could. So yeah. I don't know. You can always throw poo, and that's fun. I cannot picture a chimpanzee board. I do find it interesting that we sort of have three different takes on it. I will say the medical and psychological evidence, to a certain degree, goes along with Bill so far. Oh, Hmm. take Hmm. that, banana boy. You're going down. That's at least a B plus, (laughs) because what researchers find is the secondary effects of boredom are often detrimental to people's health. That could be drug abuse. And chimpanzees. (laughs) <laughs> and, well, that whole study was also related to being separated from your mother. So there's various things of affection, survival skills, and stimulation exercises. I was going to say child rearing as opposed to me and Bill thinking of elderly, bored people yeah. slowly dying. Well, I know plenty. Wow, that was optimistic, <laughs> wasn't it? I know plenty of people who, who lack stimulus in the sense of, uh, of activity of their brain, you know, getting involved in critical thinking, but. 
I mean, there are. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Well, I, I agree on that on that end, but I mean, there's plenty of things to look at and enjoy in our fast-paced. Uh, and I will world. say, Brandon, you also deserve a good grade for what? anticipating something that the great <laughs> German philosopher Heidegger listed boredom as one of the great causes of inspiration in creative people. Ah, that's, that's so you were definitely that's... in line with that. Take it. Ed, you do get some bonus points for mentioning Noam Chomsky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and any superfluous and unnecessary reference to monkeys always gets extra credit points in the Gold Star classroom. Because really, nothing is funnier than monkeys. I'm quite offended by his bringing knowledge to this discussion. <laughs> but the fact that he brought chimpanzees, all right. If you would have brought the orangutan with a big orange butt, I'd have been sold. And we um, also had some poop throwing, so what's not to like you know, about this, our discussion? This podcast has it all. <laughs> Are we done? I will. I, oh, no, it gets better. <laughs> Minus five points for having an antisocial attitude. <laughs> Which a, one of us does that go to? A <laughs> study of over 7,000 British civil servants found that those who self-described as bored were 2.5 times more likely to die of cardiovascular disease. Although... Whether that's a statistical anomaly or an unsubstantiated correlation, we're not sure. But certainly it has been identified as something to be studied or something that might be an unknown function that's going on. Can't trust the Brits. Yes, well. Those big furry hats. Because we don't know the if palace. they had a control group to see if bad dental hygiene contributes that's what to I was the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> increase in uh, poor cardiovascular health. Well, on psychology, philosophy, health, you guys requited yourself well, except for being pretty much completely wrong in everything that you said. So, I think we've established a precedent, actually. I think it's good to get that in the first one. So Feeling I guess, good. I, I will give you all high Fs for that. Woo! All right. And hopefully on the next topic, you'll have a chance to improve that grade. Which brings us to... I, I had a B. How did I go from a B to an A? <laughs> he changed his mind. He's the teacher. Yeah, wow. He's got tenure is what it is. That's just wrong. It's a very I'm, tough hey, grading hey, scale. I've got 11 year. That's even one better than Ooh. 10 year. <laughs> world geography. Who can tell me the world's largest island? And be careful, because this question is harder than it looks. Boy, off the top of my head, I would go Australia, but you said it's tougher, so maybe it's Antarctica? We have one vote for Australia, one vote from the same voter. This is not Chicago. You don't get multiple votes. You know what? You didn't lay that out in the rules. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, island, I don't know. I'll say Hawaii. Just oh, be... I just thought of another one. I think of the risk I will board. greatly assure you yeah. Hawaii is nowhere near <laughs> even the top Shit. ten list. Hawaii is a pimple. We're uh, talking about massive uh, land uh, masses. All right, all right. Um, Bill's See, I bet you're going to come up closer. with the one I'm thinking. Ed, you yeah. want to pipe in? I'm thinking Greenland. Yeah. Think of your risk board. But and I'm also, if I can interject, choice number two, if I'm allowed Again, multiple to voting. multiple <laughs> choice question. Yes. Australia is a continent, but I'd say it's also a country, so that, that's my runner-up choice. But, I'll say but it's an Greenland. island, isn't it? Well, so this very question is debated by geographers. Uh, the Austral is Australian island. That's the a question. I would say the most that most geographers, however, reject Australia as an island. Why? Because it is a not a country. Because there are country islands that are very large. For example, Madagascar. But because it is a continental plate. And so the is it not surrounded by water? Students, would anyone else like to agree or disagree with Bill? Wait, I said a question. Mine was yes. a question. Is it not surrounded by water? How would you answer that query? That reasonable sounding, First of all, slightly I don't erroneous. think I appreciate his vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing a little bit of arrogance. And kind of <laughs> uh, just for the record, I would like to uh, be, be on mic for that. That is what professor stands for in Latin. <laughs> I, I think we need to maybe define our terms a little bit, like definition of island, definition country maybe is more direct self-explanatory yeah. definition of continent I, yeah. I, I just like if you go with is Australia a continent surrounded by water that also makes all of North and South America one landmass that's completely surrounded by water and it makes all of Eurasia with Africa those three continents 
though co-joined by land, are technically completely surrounded by water. Therefore, because of that conundrum, that means small problem for you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hadn't even glazed over yet. <laughs> uh, well, you're better than most of my students at. That is why Australia is usually rejected. And Greenland, in fact, is posited as the largest yeah. island. After I guessed it, it's like, yeah, you and start thinking of the... Pluto's not a planet, and we won't get into this. Madagascar, which is a country island, is, in fact, cited as the fourth largest island. I have in front of me a list of the ten largest islands. Anyone think they can round out some of the other ones on the list? Ed? Uh, yes, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, Jerry, that number ten would be Gilligan's Island, <laughs> and number nine would be Fantasy Island. <laughs> Uh, we know it's not Gilligan's Island. What about island? the Island of Misfit Toys? Number eight. Very good. <laughs> Stop in front of me, Bill. Uh, that's frightening, almost as frightening as the Island of Dr. Monroe. <laughs> now I'm would really glazed over. Dr. Monroe? <laughs> yes, it would be Dr. Monroe. <laughs> yes. Minus five points for correcting the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Very bad form. Very bad form. I would say, would Iceland be up there? I know it's smaller than Greenland. No, Iceland, Iceland is far too small. Mm -hmm. That's just a step above Hawaii. Oh! oh. oh. I jumped in. <laughs> Although, it's ironic, dead time. I ironically, that. Iceland is full of beautiful uh, valleys, mountains, ice springs, and Greenland is nothing but a big chunk of ice. So their names have somehow been swapped by the Vikings. Yes. Trickery. Yes. Mm. Iceland is green and Throwing Greenland is icy. Several of the top ten islands all reside in one country. Any mm. thoughts? Japan? No, it's too small, though, isn't it? Oh, the main oh, island of Japan Asia. itself is the seventh largest island. The Japanese word for it is mm. Honshu. So the island of Honshu is, uh, is, is on the list of top ten. God bless you, Jerry. Thank you. Unless that's a continent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a country. Stupid rules. <laughs> it, uh, Asian uh, of the Asian no. persuasion? No, in fact. A little yellow fever working over I, here? I'm mean, now it's... winking at... Brandon, as I say, it's a lot closer than you think. That. <laughs> well, if it's Hawaii, I'm just going to go back. <laughs> Hawaii is a volcano. Well, we're it's a Cuba. Uh, North. North. North America. It is in North America. They are in North America, though it is not a country. The oh, islands of yeah. Baffin, the oh, yeah. Victoria, and Ellesmere are all in Canada. Wow. And they are three of the ten largest islands. Wow. It's easy when you've researched and have all of the answers beforehand. That is the responsibility yes. of the teacher to be prepared and have a lesson plan. Yeah. But Seriously. I do have to give Bill some North points right now. Yeah, give Bill some points. Because you brought up Great Britain, which is also one of the ten largest islands on Earth. Did you? Yes, he did. Of course I did. Sarcastically, <laughs> facetiously, but nonetheless... He was correct. Because, right. you know, I'm working on, while you're talking all dental hygiene with your <laughs> stereotypes, I'm working hard over here. Yes. Yes, I was wondering, is the planet really? Uranus related to Eurasia? <laughs> no, but ironically, when you're in the bathroom, European. Hey. Oh. You have brought up the wrist board a couple times. A uh, couple that's of how you learn other, geography. I agree oh, yeah. completely. Oh, yeah. It's a very educational they game. They tricked us into learning. There yeah. are a couple of other, like Madagascar and Greenland, there are a couple of the other largest islands are on the wrist board. Hmm. Uh, should we round out the list? Any more guesses? Sure. You're Go for it. Can I do a quick Sarah Palin? Is Alaska a stand an island, Jerry? <laughs> no. You and Sarah Palin are both wrong. But can wrong, you see an usual. island from there? <laughs> <laughs> the second largest island is New Guinea. The third really? is Borneo. Then we already mentioned Madagascar and Baffin. Then Sumatra. Great coffee. Then Honshu, Japan, Great Britain, Victoria, and Ellesmere are the ten largest islands. Australia not being considered an island mm. by most geographers. Rob. Mm. Just Rob. <laughs> Is yes. it also true in academia, Jerry, that it is very difficult to find two geographers to agree on pretty much anything? Well, there's a 99.9% .9 universal agreement that blue means water. But from there on in, it's downhill. I will say, Ed, for your numerously correctly named islands, you get a bonus 25 points. And wow, for your, oh, 25. For your incessant sarcasm and undermining the teacher, <laughs> you lose 30 points. Well, that's, that's how it goes. 
You're in the right. And you Bill stick with your guns, though. <laughs> Don't back down. <laughs> and Bill did mention several of the correct islands as well of the top ten list. Oh, man. So you get one point for each correct island, which equals the number of correct teeth in Britain. <laughs> there you go. So I got three. Brandon, you're going to have to work to bring your GPA I'm deep red. Your GPA, I'm deep red. Your GPA <laughs> is in trouble. Way out there. Way out there. Amusingly, someone, uh, when we were talking about islands, we got into the whole island of Dr. Monroe Moreau debate. A very famous actor was in the most recent version of the Isle of Dr. Moreau. Hmm. An actor considered amongst the top two or three greatest film actors of all time. Ooh. Daniel Day Lewis is out. Daniel Day Lewis is out. Uh, this is a recent film. Yeah, well, every uh, the most recent produced. It's probably ten to twelve years old now, maybe even yeah. a little older than that. I don't have the year of this particular film in front of me, but that film starred as the evil doctor. Ed, since you said it was an excellent actor, I think we can roll out Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze may have had a cameo as one of the pig boys. I can't confirm that without checking the cast you know list. I'm not going to sit here while you badmouth <laughs> Roadhouse. <laughs> However, the actor, no one puts Jerry in a corner. The actor that I am referring to is Marlon Brando. I was wondering if he was still alive. <laughs> Marlon Brando died in 2004. I get a point for wondering. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jerry, if you need other topics down the road, like alive or dead, famous yeah, actors yeah. might be entertaining as well. Oh, thank you for your pointless suggestion. <laughs> that was sarcastic. Nail it. Now, <laughs> minus five points to <laughs> Professor Jerry. <laughs> hey, I'm in control of the great book here. Step down, Ed. <laughs> Marlon Brando has been in numerous famous movies, but sometimes, especially when someone is such a big star, people don't remember the names of the characters that he's played. They've, they've just remembered that that person was in the movie. So the next quiz question is going to be, I'm going to name famous, probably his five most famous movies. Can you tell me the name of the character that Marlon Brando played in each movie? To give it a, make it a, potentially a little easier, I'm going to, my films are recent to older. So the most recent one on my list, not his most recent movie, but simply his most recent famous movie on my list was Apocalypse Now from 1979. I won't get any of these. The I'm sure, I bet I haven't seen any of these movies. Uh, minus five points for not having seen Apocalypse Now. I know. It's, <laughs> it's going to get worse as you go down. Does, does anyone remember the name of his character? Yes. Uh, I have a little bit more pointless information to share with Please. the class, if that's okay. Do. I believe that movie Apocalypse Now came out in the early 70s, maybe 72 and it was um, based on Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. And the character from that was like Kurt or Kurt, something like that. So I'm going to guess Kurt, just to make that connection. Um, Kurt is the correct name of the character. Ooh. Though in the, and it is based on Joseph Conrad's novel. Ooh. Um, nice. However, it, the adaptation, it has a more of a military setting. So it's Colonel Kurtz. And Apocalypse Now was many years oh. in pre-production and post-production. So they may have even began filming as early as 72, yeah, but I its official it release date is 1979. Okay, 1972, The Godfather. Yeah. Brandon, you raised your hand first. No, no, I... Do you know the I name flinched, of the character I, he played? It was the name it of... just escaped me, Hold The on. name of the crime family. Ed, you was wanted to Corley. say something? Ah, say louder, Corleone. louder, Bill. Corleone. Corleone. You Corleone. know what? The only yeah, reason you, I know that... Listen, and it, it's kind of a guess. Is did you ever see Mad TV's take off on Raging Rudolph, the Rudolph the Red Dome? Yeah, that's the only reason. Did you ever see it? I did not. You got to YouTube it. It's okay. called Raging Rudolph. As soon as you watch Apocalypse Now, I'll look up Raging I'm Rudolph. I'm telling you, it is brilliant. It is so well done. You saw it, okay. Ed. Back me up. Uh, two quick points. One, I have. I'd like to file an appeal because Bill did not have his hand up. So just a procedure <laughs> no, thing. this is called parliamentary procedure <laughs> in that you. It's a feel thing. You notice that yeah. that Brandon is done sucking up, and yeah, that is your yes. opening yeah, yeah, to yeah, say yeah, something yeah. before Mister <laughs> Hand Raiser Goody Two Shoes gets yeah. in his. Oh Bill, yes, the, yes. The, Bill the, made. I'm Bill, put in my place. <laughs> Bill made himself present. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> You're a likable guy. All right, Ed, <laughs> if you have something oh, well, wild to say. He's still raising yes. his hand. This is awesome. Yes. My second point is I was just going to guess the Godfather, not the Corleone. Okay. So I wouldn't have even been in the ballpark. His character so was the Godfather <laughs> of the title. Raging Rudolph. His uh, first name was Vito, by the way. Mm. Don Vito Corleone. 
Oh, I know his also, son's name was Michael, if there's partial credit for that. Michael Corleone? Yes, that is correct. Whoa, whoa, but whoa. There's zero I thought Brandon was the suck up. What is with yeah, you? Yeah, man. <laughs> just Possibly one of Brando's <laughs> best roles, um, but sometimes an overlooked film now, decades later, is 1972's Last Tango in Paris. Ah, uh, 1972. I remember. Does oh. anyone remember the name of his character? A I, Academy Award nominated performance, I might add. I assume he said it like the only time we would have known his name. He said it, but we couldn't understand what he said. <laughs> yes. Is it the way he uh, said it, it was. <laughs> uh, he only knew his character's name if it was written on the thigh of his co star. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> wait, wait, someone's raising his hand. <laughs> wait, I spy in the distance. He wants a high five. With their hand raised. Let's just. <laughs> All right. Ed. I believe it was Francois Mitterrand. No, but the character may have been based on Francois Mitterrand. The, last, the film is set in Paris. He plays an American in Paris who has recently lost his wife and has a turret affair as a part of his grief. Uh, so it's a very emotionally charged and sexually charged performance. Um, he could have done like, any French thing, Marcel Marceau, <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> now he's waving too. Brando hands. was in a box. Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> you would need Cabernet. quite a large box for Brando. <laughs> Ed. Can you give us a clue? Are clues permissible? Maybe what's it rhyme with, or initials, or first letter? Like, <laughs> I work will with say us, this: Jerry. that my clue is it's Paul. Now, rather than linger on a question nobody knows the answer to, <laughs> oh, on the waterfront, 1954. Anyone know his character name from that? Really good flick, but Terry no. Malloy. Mm. And finally on my list, yeah, you're a theater guy. Yeah, you should be all over this no, film. It's- that that made say. him famous, a streetcar named street Desire. Streetcar, I know, and I'm slapping myself, and I can't think of it. I've already. Uh, yeah, no, don't be. No, no, you can't be. No, I am DB. No it. Googling yourself on this podcast. This is a PG First of all, show. I'm a little disturbed by him slapping himself in the public. I, I <laughs> feel I should. Does it start with a B? No. No, then I'm off. Uh, we know that Wait. at one point he famously yells the name Stella. Right. Stella, yeah. And his character is the brute, Stanley. Kowalski. Oh, Kowalski. Man, yes, yes. you should partial have known that. Yes. yes, partial credit for after I said the answer, you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Way to come through. <laughs> Your scores <laughs> are going. Oh, well. Here it comes. Are joining Bill on the island of Antarctica at this moment as they slide further and further south. We may but we be, don't have to share it with any polar bears because, you know. <laughs> we may be incapable of awarding the golden banana if classroom uh, performance is not improved. Um, this is going to get a purple key. This is a, a quick <laughs> like... geography science question. We don't have to go on it long, simply this. Ed, <laughs> you, for our listeners at home, I'd like to describe you as someone who it wouldn't hurt if you lost a few pounds. Now, <laughs> I mention that only because anyone who was conscious of their weight, there is a place you can go on the earth where you will weigh less. And do you know where that place is? Ed. I want to say the ocean or the Red Sea, something with salt. Doesn't our buoyancy Dead Sea. Change? I'm going to say the or, Dead Sea. I'm going to piggyback because of the... There is buoyancy issues in salt water, yeah. or even any water, but with salt even more so. However, this is not a water-based buoyancy issue. This is you could put a scale on the ground and stand on it, and you will weigh less than you do normally. Ed. Um, the Earth is not perfectly round. It's more like a little bit of an oval or oblate spheroid. I'm going to say equator because it's further See, out. See, that's what equator. I was thinking, I was but saying, I, had, I didn't yeah. have a rationale for it. I would say it too. Well, you, what you do, Bill, is give the answer first and then make up a rationale after you say it. See, because on the equator, it's <laughs> yeah. hotter. Tell us about right? the equator, Bill. And you start sweating more. Yes. And as long as you yes. sweat and you're kind of leaning yes. so the water yes. falls no. off of you, you will weigh no. less. I'm going to jump in. The equator, you're <laughs> not quite on either side, let's say, and your weight is balanced evenly on both sides, and you make up neither of those sides evenly. So That's why they call it the equator, because it equates to less when yeah, you sweat yeah, yeah. it out. Yeah. Because, as Ed described, the waste of the earth is a little further out, um, and that has to do with the momentum of the Earth as it spins. <laughs> However, uh, although this is actually a, a kind of internet comment or internet joke you hear that you weigh less at the equator, um, the amount that you weigh less 
is quite small. If you weighed 200 pounds, you would still weigh over 199 pounds. At this so I Earth. argue this, <laughs> and that you weigh 199.5, let's say there. Yes. But let's say in the Toth's bathroom, right? after you've been drinking, right. you go purge. Yes. Would you not weigh less there than right. you would at the equator? Yes. Well, Ed? Would our flop sweat spray off of us in a clockwise or counterclockwise pattern? <laughs> all right, equator? first of all, stop this piggybacking <laughs> off of my sweat comments. <laughs> well, this is why there's no comedy clubs on the equator. Yeah. Uh, because of the flop sweat paradox. Oh, okay. Yes. Ed. <laughs> I thought you were a theater I, professor. I, What's with all the geography and science questions? I had a pop culture film question, and it nosedived immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, because we've been nailing be, the science and geography I stuff. I thought that was going to be uh, the easy Hawaii? question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought Brando questions were going to be the easy board. questions. Let me pull out my wrist questions. We'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but we cover general knowledge and useful information from across the spectrum of academia and intellectual pursuits. And I will also add for the record that even now, even I am getting sick of Ed raising his hand. <laughs> it has reached a level of absurdity. Well, now, see, now you're I, just encouraging well, him. Well, we need the answer to this one. Women listening to this right now are dying to know what this is. Well, that was this quite, place is. How long did it take it, us before it got sexist? We need, we need to get on this. Wow. Our female listeners. Speaking of sexist questions, yeah. this is going to bring us to our last official quiz question for today's class. Ooh. And I will warn you, knowing of both of Bill's background in sports and his sexual prowess, he may have an wow, advantage. Wow, why am I getting slammed? <laughs> you may have an advantage can the for teach, this question. Can the professor lose something for sarcasm? So you, so you may want to give your classmates a chance before you jump on the answer. And like, I haven't asked the question yet, Ed. Well, just yes. from that introduction, I think I know where the golden banana will end up tonight. <laughs> no one knows where the golden banana will end up. However, it may end up to the person who can give the best answer to this, your final test question. <laughs> Does sex before an athletic event decrease your performance on the field? If I ever have sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With a woman. The, all of our women and listeners are sitting on the edge of their chairs. You know what? I got to say, I think it depends on the athletic event. If it is something, if you call golf athletic, right. which right. I don't, right? I think mentally it relaxes you in a very calm state. Yeah. Um, and you should be able to do better at a thinky sport. That's a good my, now, my, if it is nah. a physical thing, and you happen to be an old, decrepit man like me, you're toast, man. You're going to well, get knocked out I mean, Muhammad round. Ali, you say knock out in the first round, Muhammad Ali famously claimed to avoid sex for a full six weeks mm -hmm. before an important fight. Which is amazing, because how many kids did he have? Yes. <laughs> he was, all the other weeks were booked. I, I get the physiological... His sperm floated like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> Swam like a... I guess B would work. Yes. The, the physiological aspect makes sense. You know, you're, you're storing up right. the, that energy. Right. I mean, sexual energy is, is, is huge, you right. know what I mean? But, like, at the same time... For me, it would be a distraction. Like, I mean, given that I don't care about sports more than I care about sex, I mean, it would be the thing I'd be thinking about more. But, yeah, I guess it does kind of depend on what sport it is. But if it was football, wrestling, something high energy, I really I find it to be a distraction. If you know that you were purposely avoiding it, that something was waiting for you uh, right. even sexier than, uh, right. than normal, okay. because your girlfriend might say to you, uh, What if it is sex on an island? <laughs> with and Dr. Moreau. On the equator. And I'm out. <laughs> Antarctica with a penguin. Ed. Um, I'm a recreational softball player, and I am the pitcher on my team. And I know if I have sex before a game, my throwing arm is all cramped up. And I <laughs> <laughs> that may be the best answer. Yeah, he can't yeah. really well, grip, I'm but he going, feels good. Yeah. For that answer, he's got, Ed, he's got the best stick going, ball, in the, going sticky to, ball in the league. I am going to award you a gold star for that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. Take it. That one came out of left field. Wow. Um, now, I am quite impressed. Uh, the answers so far have been a little like 50 50. Like, it depends. No, I think it's going to, you know what, if it's right before the athletic event, I think it's going to decrease your performance. I, if we're saying it's an athletic event. The, the, the way the question is phrased, it, is, it does mean an athletic event. Yeah. For example, especially in an older generation, Olympic athletes living in the Olympic Village were discouraged 
I don't know how well this has ever been. And enforced. that's what they say. The Olympic Village is just a sex yes. fest. <laughs> that's but it's the... after the events. Um, Ed. Uh, my serious answer is that no, it's like an old boxing wife's tale or mm-hmm. wife's tale. Right. I don't think it hurts. I think right. it can mm-hmm. neutral or positive effect. But in, what about your sticky ball? In the <laughs> balls. <laughs> his, Ew. His knuckle ball. Mm-hmm. His um. <laughs> try, uh, let's leave the. I mean, go to Will Chamberlain. Sec- Will Chamberlain's conquest <laughs> were after games. I don't the, think they were. The um, as a medical question. One of the things that's interesting is it is so little researched, especially since there's a lot of sports science. Because everyone's napping. Research. Yes, <laughs> too much napping before and after the research. The research that has been done and the answers that have been posited by trainers and Olympic trainers contemporarily, like in the past few years, is that it is probably an old boxing wives tale and that there is no evidence that it, there's negative effects, even for things like boxing or wrestling. Um, (laughs) And as Brandon was suggesting, and even Bill did say as well, there may be benefits such as taking it off your mind, relaxing, it's aerobic. So there actually may be benefits to having your normal sex life. So that's your warm-up for the game. The um, researchers, and this is a kind of a generalization, so think what you will, compare having sex uh, as an athletic exertion to being about equal to a 100-meter dash. So it is an exertion, but actually short distance dashes you recover from quickly. How how quick do you run the hundred meter? <laughs> <laughs> Both over nine point five <laughs> <That's good> seconds. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I'm sold. Yes. Man, you got a good time. You got to pace yourself yeah. <laughs> and then push through at the end. Yes, a new personal best. <laughs> well, this brings us to the end of another Gold Star classroom, and as I calculate the final grades and find what will undoubtedly be an undeserving recipient of the Golden Banana, I will give you all one more chance for extra credit points. Any observations, questions, or knowledge you'd like to impart to the class at this time? Ed, I thought I'd call on you before you raised your hand for a change. You totally threw him off. I know. He's stunned. Instead of sharing knowledge, can I put forth a trivia mm-hmm. question for the class? Quickly. At large. Okay. Since we were talking about boxing, when did the first Rocky movie come out? What year? 1975. I'll go 76. I want to say 76 for the bicentennial. Oh, you didn't know either? Yeah, you were just throwing it out. For the sake of future wow. reference. Hey, the game. If you could know. throw a question out, you should yeah. know the answer. You will now understand why your teacher has lesson plans and look at all the yes, answers yes. before asking any of yes. his questions. It's definitely 75 or 76. Okay, and Rocky. Did Rocky have sex before the big fight? No. no. In fact, Mickey no. yelled at him not to. There was a whole scene in the movie. And about you that. do not argue with the penguin. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, any final comments or knowledge? Yeah, I mean, my whole childhood growing up playing sports, um, <laughs> having sex before uh, having sex before the game did not affect my ability to build sandcastles uh, out on the outfield <laughs> at all. <laughs> Matter of fact, the sand stuck together better. It did. It really did. So, yeah. you know, for me, no big deal. Not many people realize this. That's much how an mortar and concrete were invented. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Not much of an athlete here. So. Yeah. And student, Mr. Bill Barranco. First of all, I think we have just proven that uh, due to the wisdom of Burgess Meredith that we have the answer on this one. But overall, I think we've really accomplished a lot today in this classroom. We have learned about pitching habits, <laughs> uh, disturbing sticky sand castles, and none of us really has a clue what an island actually is. And no one has really defined the difference between a continent and an island, which I think is total BS. And while he's sucking down some golden piece of fruit, I'm going to be ticked off with my aluminum or tangerine you drove a long and way. still complaining about this. But other than that, it was really great. So now we come to the part of the class where we award the coveted Golden Banana Classroom Prize. Um, Brandon <laughs> has been ruled ineligible for too much brown nosing. Wow. And I didn't I'm think gone. that was. And, and Ed well, even the way he separates his brown nosing. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> and Ed has been eliminated for not enough brown nosing, which brings us to today's winner of the Golden Banana, Bill Barranque. I brown nose just I'm right. right. I'm Goldie right. Brown Nose. Just that doesn't right sound about. right. Is it on the floor? <laughs> Does he have to bend over to pick it up? <laughs> 
and is delivered in a very special ceremony off camera, off microphone, with no one else around. And with that... And not near your pitching mound. I would like to thank all of my students. Thank you. Ed, Brandon, and Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Gold Star Classroom is written and produced by Jerry Jaffe. Our producer and engineer is Stephen Gutierrez. Original music composed and produced by Jeff Geddert. Mr. Geddert is also our assistant producer. All commentary and opinions expressed by guests of Gold Star Classroom are meant for entertainment purposes only. For Gold Star Classroom, I'm Jerry Jaffe.